Uh, this is the second straight year the governor and our leaders here have worked together to have a balanced, fiscally responsible budget, no new taxes, fees, or gimmicks. But there's much more uh, to this story than just the budget. The reform plan that will transform our state, this represents a fundamental change to the way we do business and the way we serve people. Our state is now in a position of strength to invest in our communities and our economy in order to create jobs. The New York Works Program will change how we invest, plan, and build infrastructure projects throughout the state. The governor's education performance grants in conjunction with the teacher evaluation system we recently enacted will reform our schools to foster student achievement and school accountability. The state takeover of Medicaid growth and administrative costs coupled with pension reform will transform the state relationship with other local governments. And there are only a few more changes to be made and as the state moves forward, but it is, a, a, I think, another year to be very, very proud. And, and uh, I'll speak. I'm proud of the governor, the speaker, the Senate Majority Leader, and all the legislature for what they've done. This is truly a, a tremendous change, a tremendous step forward for our state. So please welcome to the podium uh, the great leader of our New York State Assembly, Speaker Sheldon Silver. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor Duffy. Thank you, as always, for your efforts in, in this budget, as well as on behalf of the economy of the state of New York. Um, and, Governor, I once again want to commend you on behalf of the Assembly majority. First, for giving the legislature an excellent template from which to commence our work, and second, for your steady leadership in guiding us to another early budget. Uh, you began this year with a message which focused on jobs and economic growth. With this agreement, we continue, as promised, our support for regional economic development councils, make the necessary investments in our statewide infrastructure, and provide critical funding for mass transit. We began the year by calling upon the state to help us rebuild the ladder to financial security, long relied on by working families. In this agreement, I am pleased to say that we keep that promise to increase our investment in public education, the cornerstone of our economy, providing the greatest assistance to the neediest school districts while at the same time encouraging innovation and better performance. Uh, we keep the promise to increase our investments in health care, including a restoration of EPIC and funding for family planning services, acknowledging the value of our community colleges as gateways to higher education and job training. We increase by 7 percent our support for these vital institutions. This marks the first community college base aid increase in five years and we're providing $93 million more for higher education opportunity programs. For the first time ever, we are establishing three DREAM Act clinics, which will help young immigrants and their families overcome the barriers to education, employment, and economic stability. And, of course, affordable housing has always been a problem in New York State, and we are increasing our investment in state neighborhood preservation and rural preservation uh, programs, as well as funding a mortgage foreclosure program to help people who are in danger of foreclosure. Let me just uh, indicate that the members of the Assembly who served on the conference committees that produced uh, these agreements are here in our audience and others are working as we speak to conclude this uh, budget. Uh, we began passing the budget bills on Wednesday, and I'm confident we will uh, finish them uh, very shortly. Um, they were sent to Albany by their constituents, by the citizens of their district, with a mandate to make things better and to make things different. Today, we have that deliberative process, and we put forth our concerns in our assembly budget proposal, and working with Senator Skelos and you, Governor, we have been able to mesh our thoughts with your thoughts, and we produced what I think is a great uh, document here. So I want to thank the uh, chair of our Ways and Means Committee, who will be here soon, Denny Farrell, who's certainly doing uh, the work today in the debate on the budget, 
and for all of his uh, guidance to us. And likewise, I'd like to thank Minority Leader uh, Brian Kolb for his uh, input and his influence in this process. So we thank you for listening to us, for recognizing the importance of the issues we raised, and for working with us in a spirit of compromise to craft a budget that truly reflects the needs of the people of the state of New York. It is a breath of fresh air to all of us, and I congratulate you in advance, Governor, on the second on-time or even early budget for the Cuomo administration and for the state of New York. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker and uh, Governor and Lieutenant Governor, uh, Senator Sampson, Brian Kolb, Tom Libis, uh, and John D. Francisco, who's preparing his answers right now to the rest of the questions that are going to come up during the debate. Uh, the speaker pointed out many of the positive things, or at least some of the positive things that have been accomplished uh, in this budget. Uh, when he talked about meshing things together, um, in the past, it used to be messing things together. Mm -hmm. And now we are functioning in a very, very positive way that I know personally myself and all the members of the legislature, uh, Republicans, Democrats, uh, the executive branch, the governor, we're very proud of the way government is now functioning in Albany. And this truly is historic that we've passed uh, two budgets in a row, uh, not just on time, but early, in the daylight. And the fact that we are doing this without raising any taxes or fees, and there is an emphasis on private sector job creation. So we've accomplished much, Governor, up to this point, and I thank you and all of the members. We thank you for your leadership, but there's a lot more to do in the rest of the legislative session, uh, things that will encourage the job creators to grow jobs in New York State and put people back to work. So to all the members of the legislature, Republicans, Democrats, Senate, Assemblymen, and to our conference chairs that are here, we say thank you to you. And, Governor, we thank you for your great leadership. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Lieutenant Governor for his extraordinary efforts on this, uh, getting this budget done. Speaker Silver, Senate Minority Leader, uh, sorry, Speaker Silver, Senate Majority Leader Dean Skelos, Senate Minority Leader John Sampson, Assembly Minority Leader Brian Kolb, uh, thank you all very much for this really great product on behalf of all the people of the state of New York. This has been an extraordinary feat, and it's a very proud day for the entire state. Uh, as you heard, this budget is a very good and strong budget. As a matter of fact, it's, it's more than just a budget. When I outlined the budget, I said this is more of a reform plan than a budget. Uh, and it was a reform plan that called for a major transformation of vital priority areas for this state. And it has achieved that. I believe the teacher evaluations that were part of this plan is going to be a major innovation in public education. I think it will prove to be one of the most dramatic reforms uh, in decades for public education, actually bringing performance management into public education. What we did with pension reform is going to change the financial position of this state for decades to come. It was a fundamental financial reform that changed the basic trajectory of this state's finances and all the local governments within it. The mandate relief that we have passed, pension reform plus uh, the Medicaid pickup, is going to change the immediate circumstance of local governments all across the state, and it's just what they had been asking for. We have a truly ambitious job development program, economic development program in New York Works that is combining two things. It's going to be creating jobs, and it's going to be rebuilding New York's roads and bridges, which we needed to be doing anyway. As you heard, it invests in higher education, uh, in the SUNY system, in community colleges that desperately needed it. It closed a $2 billion deficit 
on top of all the good work that it's doing. Um, and as the Senate Majority Leader mentioned, it truly is an example of fiscal discipline and fiscal integrity. The spending actually goes down from last year overall, and the state spending level is within the 2 percent. I want to applaud all the uh, partners who made this a reality on the Senate side and on the Assembly side. Uh, on the Senate side, Senator John DeFrancisco, we thank you very much for your leadership. Assemblyman Denny Farrell is on his way down to join us today, and I want to thank him for his leadership. Uh, the staffs on both sides worked incredibly hard. Robert Mejica and Diane Berman on the Senate side, and Jim Yates and Matt Howard on the Assembly side. I want to thank uh, my team, Larry Schwartz, the Secretary, Bob Megna, Mylon Dennerstein, the Council, and Howard Glazer, the Director of Operations, uh, that stayed up night after night to make this a reality. Uh, and my last point, uh, I think, is this, and you heard it both from the Speaker and the Senate Majority Leader. This state government has come a very long way in a very short period of time. Uh, at one time, this state government was a joke. They were literally laughing about it on the, on the late night shows. Uh, it was a point of ridicule. For many, many years, this government truly disappointed the people of this state. It has been a dramatic and almost unbelievable turnaround in 15 months. And we went from a model of dysfunction to, I believe, a model of function. These are very tough economic times. And the effort uh, that it took to get this budget done should not be shortchanged. And I have nothing but applause for my partners in the legislature and nothing but kudos for the good work that they have done. Uh, again, I think this, this example shows that they were willing to put aside their own politics and act in the best interest of the state. And this is not a Democratic budget or a Republican budget. This is a budget that put the needs of New Yorkers first. And I salute the Senate Majority Leader for his leadership, and I salute the Speaker for his leadership. Uh, I'm proud to be part of this government today. And I've been proud to be part of this government every day for the past 15 months. But uh, in some ways, uh, today is a, a, the epitome of uh, everything we've been working towards for a long time, and it's my pleasure to be part of it. We'll now sign uh, one of the bills, and uh, we'll be available for questions afterwards. Thank you. We'll take some questions from the uh, press. Uh, no, well, the Department of Health is working on a long-term uh, financial plan for uh, many of the hospitals that are undergoing distress currently. Um, but I don't. I can get you the additional information on Kingsborough from the Department of Health. Of the, of the health exchange order that you were hoping to... We'll uh, be doing it um, this week. This, this coming week, yes. You mentioned several times this week with the Speaker and the Senate Majority Leader. Obviously now with the major issues done, all eyes are turning to November. Do you plan, would you like to see Dean Scales remain Majority Leader, or are you going to work on Senate again? One of the things that has worked for us is, is we've kept the politics on the side and we've done uh, government work, uh, and we'll continue to do that. We still have a legislative session, as the Senate Majority Leader spoke about. First, we still have to pass the remainder of the budget bills, which I believe we'll do 
uh, this afternoon, and then we'll have the majority of the session, and then uh, we'll get to politics later on in the year. Thanks for asking, though, anyway, Ken. <laughs> nice of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're going way out there on the limb, huh, Joe? You're a gutsy guy, Senator Robey. <laughs> characterize the role that special interest groups played in this budget cycle compared to previous budget cycles? You know, Nick, I don't know if it's any uh, more or less than the past. Uh, nothing really struck my attention. Do you think the community of New York played a role at all in moving the budget forward? Well, they were involved last year also, right? So that wouldn't have been a difference this year to last year. Governor, I know more money was put in the budget for education this year, but a number of the less wealthy districts in this area are still announcing some fairly significant cutbacks um, in their new budget uh, to be voted on in May. Um, do you think that enough was done to help those districts? Look, I think, uh, and I'll, I'll ask my, uh, my colleagues to chime in on this one because I'm sure they'll want to, but uh, my point of view is this. The, we started this year with a $2 billion deficit, okay? We needed $2 billion to get to zero. So we started with a $2 billion deficit, and the national economy is still reeling. Despite that, we increased aid to education about 4%, 4%, which is higher than the rate of inflation, which I think is an extraordinary effort, given the financial situation that we're in. Uh, would we like to have raised it more? Of course. But is 4% a very significant raise, given where we are? Yes, it is. And I'm proud of it. I think it shows our priorities, and our priority is education. And we literally put our money where our mouth is. Senator? Yeah. I, I totally agree with the, uh, the governor. Uh, like families, uh, we have uh, our fiscal constraints. Uh, people throughout the state are saying, no new taxes, and they want us to con control spending and send the message that New York is open to create jobs. And um, we're very happy, the Senate, uh, in terms of the increase in aid to education. I think two years ago, a year ago, uh, nobody would have thought that would have been possible uh, based on the economic circumstances that exist uh, throughout this nation. So I'm very satisfied with the increase in aid to education satisfied the way it's being distributed, regionally fair, and I believe this is a solid, solid budget. Governor, back in Naples. Give me a shout also, all right. <laughs> don't, don't interrupt the speaker, Ken. The all all I really you want know. to, yeah, I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> His brother teaches in Dean's district. <laughs> I didn't uh, know that. I didn't yeah, know that. see that? <laughs> Did you vote in my district? <laughs> you didn't know that. Uh, the only thing I wanted to point out is $805 million was the actual increase to education. 71% of that went to districts that we categorize as high needs. So that's the real answer to the question that you asked. Yes, we would have liked to do more, but we were very cognizant of high-needs districts in this budget. 71 percent of that increase went to high-needs districts. George Pataki back in 95 and 96 was hailed for bringing spending under control. He was hailed for getting a lot of his accomplishments done those first two years. Third year, as he started looking for the election, he went leftward, spending started going up and didn't go back. Can you commit now to keeping spending at the 2% level you've been doing the first two years? Is that what your plan is for next year? Well, let's start with what was implicit in your question. Are you hailing our accomplishment today? Is that what you're saying? I All the hails for George Pataki. Are you hailing the accomplishment of the legislature and the governor today? Thank you very much. I thank you for your endorsement. And it was very nice of you to hail our accomplishments. I think you happen to be right in your multiple hails for us. But it was still nice to hear. Well, the future. Well, we'll the future will take care of when we get to the future. Obviously, we would like to, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want to commit for a future budget. Let's get this one passed. One more, guys. Governor, looking in the, the short-term future, what do you see as your priorities for the rest of the legislative session? 
Well, let's go again. Let's get through the budget this uh, today, and then we'll be sitting down. I'll sit down with my colleagues, with the speaker, and with the Senate Majority Leader, and we'll talk about the rest of the session next week. Well, when they come back from break. Do you still plan on pushing for campaign finance? Program? Yes. Can you change uh, to your position on the minimum wage uh, bill that we talked no. about? Speaker Silver. Speaker Silver, uh, I just had a question about ending the dysfunction in government. Do you think that the reason that, as we're hearing today, this function ended is because we have Governor Cuomo as opposed to the last three governors? Were they the cause of the dysfunction that we saw in government? Well, I think Governor Cuomo is a big part of it, but I think it's also a recognition by legislative leaders that you have now leadership that we could sit down and forge bipartisan agreements and compromise, and that was the key. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you all.